Hello, I'm Nick Park from Evangelical Alliance Ireland, and this is our weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. The whole topic of immigration is really prominent in the news again for a variety of reasons. A lot of division, a lot of anger, and a lot of fear is being expressed. Now, uh, this whole thing of immigration is something we have addressed through Evangelical Alliance. In fact, when I took over as executive director uh, just uh, 10 years ago, uh, we produced the first book that I produced for Evangelical Alliance was called Ministry to Migrants and Asylum Seekers. And uh, that's, by the way, it's still available. We still have a few copies left of that. And that is available if you want to go to our website, www.evangelical.ie. You can order a copy or it's available as a, a, a Kindle ebook from amazon.co.uk. But uh, basically, the, the views that we expressed in that book then still hold true today. But historically, we as the Irish people are a nation of migrants. Many of us for many generations traveled to other countries in order to find work. Uh, we were economic migrants. Uh, and I say us advisably because I myself traveled to the UK and lived in Britain for a number of years before returning to Ireland. Uh, theologically, we have a command to love the stranger and the alien that is among us. And missionally, there are so many opportunities to share Jesus. We have people who in their own countries, we might not even have the opportunity because of the repressive regimes there. We might not have the opportunity to share Jesus with them at all. But when they come here to Ireland, we can share Jesus with them. And I've been very involved with this personally over the last uh, 25 years, uh, including working with and helping set up migrant churches and helping churches become multicultural and also working with migrants on a practical level. Uh, just in the last year and a half, I've been very involved in a project that has helped a family, a very vulnerable family that was in a terrible situation in Afghanistan, being able to come here to Ireland and uh, be able to get visas to come and enter the country legally and uh, to get settled here and to provide a home for them. So uh, this is a subject that is very dear to my heart, but obviously uh, there's more kickback on the support that when I express support for migrants and believe that migrants coming into the country is a good thing, which I do believe, uh, I get a lot more pushback and kickback on that than maybe would have 10 years ago. Uh, there's been some high profile incidents uh, where there have been crimes, including some horrible crimes committed by migrants. Now, the, you know, so, to be honest, any group of people there will be people that commit crimes. There have been Irish people that, that have committed horrible crimes as well. And we did have an incident in Dublin where there was a, a dreadful attack on children where uh, basically it was turned into being all about immigration when, from my standpoint, the, the biggest problem there was a mental health problem that should have been addressed and was not because we have dreadful care for people with mental health problems in this country. And if we had a much better system of dealing with mental health, that incident would never have happened. Uh, also, there have been a couple in the UK, there have been a couple of really disturbing cases that I, I view as really serious, which is where people who had come from an Islamic country and had claimed to have converted to Christianity. And therefore that was the basis of them not being deported back to the countries they came from, that they would be persecuted now as Christians, have then gone on to commit serious crimes and, and uh, hate crimes. Uh, so that's an issue, these fake conversions, that's an issue that should concern us as the Church of Jesus Christ uh, very much. Because an immigration policy needs to be generous. I believe an immigration policy needs to help suffering people, that that is what Jesus would have us do. Uh, but also an immigration policy needs to protect society as well. So how do we respond to this? Well, not with fear. Fear solves nothing, and God has not given us a spirit of fear. And there are people who are trying to uh, stir up uh, Project Fear against migrants. So we should have nothing to do with that. We are not, as Christians, we are not people of fear and we should never be part of anyone's project of fear. 
Neither should, of course, should we respond even worse, God forbid, with hate, because there is hate being expressed. When people are setting fire to facilities that are either earmarked for housing migrants or in some cases were not, were used, include somewhere for housing homeless people, but were at, the rumors were that it was for migrants. When people start burning places down and setting fire to them, that is not just fear. And that is not just concern, that is hatred. And uh, thank God the guards in our country do have the, the laws and the tools to deal with that. Arson is a very serious offence in Ireland. In fact, arson carries a maximum penalty of life imprisonment under Irish law. And uh, we should pray for the Garda who have to investigate and stop these acts of hate from happening and bring those who are committing them to justice. That's certainly something I'm praying for. How, but how do we respond? If we don't respond with fear, if we don't resp respond with hate, well, I believe we need to respond with integrity and love and truth. We need to encourage our government to manage immigration in a way that is compassionate, but also protect society. And when it comes particularly to an area where we have the power to address it, then we need to act in a biblical way. And I'm referring now to these fake conversions, because one of the reasons why such fake conversions take place is because the modern day church is so weak on discipleship. We're, 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 we're quite good on evangelism. You know, we, we, we tell people about Jesus. We engage in evangelism and witness in so many different ways. I do believe the evangelical church in Ireland is passionate about evangelism and witness. But all too often that has been about producing decisions rather than producing disciples. And uh, yeah, we can get people to pray the sinner's prayer. And to be honest, this has been a problem with Irish evangelical Christianity long before we had any immigrants coming into our country at all. It's been a problem where we get people to pray a sinner's prayer and then we declare they're saved. Whenever Jesus did not come to make decisions, Jesus came to make disciples. And the task of the church is to make disciples of all nations. And so we as the church, if, if people are uh, making fake conversions and we as the church don't spot it, then we are out of order and we have become part of the problem rather than the solution. So we as the church of Jesus Christ need to disciple people better. And if we were doing that, you would not have church leaders providing uh, references for people that they've converted to Christianity when they have zero evidence of becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. We need to be more accountable in our, uh, in our advocacy. We need to be more accountable in our discipleship. We need to know, get to know the people that we are leading to Christ. We need to know them better, and we need to be sure that they are indeed a new creation in Christ Jesus. And if we have doubts whether they are or not, then we have no business giving, uh, uh, giving assurances to immigration tribunals or whatever else to enable people who have not been had a conversion experience of Jesus Christ at all, enabling them to stay and then commit crimes. So this is one area where we as the church can really make a difference. And instead of just shouting loudly on one side of the issue or another about immigration, let's make sure that we do our part well. There's a great opportunity for people who have come from different faiths and backgrounds that are very antagonistic towards Christianity. There's great opportunities to win them for Jesus, but let's make sure we really are winning them for Jesus and let's make sure that they are becoming new creations that will indeed live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We've got work to do, but I believe the church can do it and I believe we can do it well. It might be Friday, but Sunday's coming.